What's up everybody? So I went mushroom hunting on the Oregon coast. It was really beautiful. It was kind of cold, but it's not quite winter yet. It's actually prime season for um, Slosby azurescens, and we actually found uh, a lot. It was really, really cool. It's the first time I've found Slosby azurescens. As you guys know, I'm into mushrooms, but I'm super excited about Slosby's. So um, I will show you guys that in a second, but I got tons of cool pictures. Uh, some mushrooms that I know the names of and some that I'm not too uh, clear on. So if any of you guys can help out on some of these mushroom names, that'd be awesome. Because I'm still getting used to West Coast varieties and everything just seems to be bigger. The trees are bigger. Mushrooms are bigger. Just things are bigger here. It's really interesting. Um, so I got a bunch of pictures and videos to show you guys. If you guys can help me out with some names, that'd be awesome. But um, yeah, let's just get into it. Let me show you here. All right, shrink me down. Obviously, you can see these rushulas. So, um, let me see here. I could probably zoom in a bit, but yeah, we'll get more macro pictures. Okay, so obviously, you can see these beautiful, beautiful rushulas. Just they were absolutely everywhere, just everywhere, and they're so huge. I'm, I'm not used to seeing them this big in Georgia, where I'm from. Um, you had to get a picture of the red blush. Really pretty. Uh, yeah, just a big old honker. They were just everywhere. Just everywhere. These were the first few found that we found. Here's some with a little it's kind of aged picture of the gills. The pink blushing on the stem. This one's kind of malformed. And some, what I'm going to call Lucaria lacata. I mean, these are the dis they say call them deceiver mushrooms, whatever. They were also in massive numbers. So, I mean, they were also really pretty. There's H uncovering a one of those green bruising lactarius mushrooms. Found a few of those. I'll show you some more in a second. There's me holding another Lucaria. Bam! So you can see this beautiful, I guess, uh, maybe you're calling it, maybe we call it lactarius thinos or delici deliciosis or deliciosis variation deterimus. I, I don't actually know. These are kind of really hard to identify because there's a lot that are just um, really similar. Um, that's what I'm calling it. If you guys want to call it something else, let me know in any kind of comments somewhere. But yeah, this was like a prime, beautiful, beautiful little thing. You can see the green bruising. It's pretty interesting. Apparently a good edible. We did, we did not take it back though. Um, I probably could have taken this one. This looks really prime. Uh, that's the Lacaria next to the Lactarius. Uh, don't know what to call these. Merasmius or something like that. No idea. Some more Lacaria. Actually, yeah, I just, yeah, Lacaria. They were everywhere. There's some more of these little guys. And bam! You can see serious green bruising in these lactarius. Those are kind of old, but there's just this fat cluster I had to get a picture of. Now these guys, little uh, mycenas or something, uh, like, I don't really know what you call them. Tiny, tiny little guys. Really pretty. Mycena or mer merasmius, I just don't, they're just, uh, somebody help me on these. Never been clear on Mycenas or um, Merasmius. Um, here is the first Slosophy azurescence that I have ever found. That was super fun. In the dune grasses on the coast, there he is. Again, you can see the little umbo in the center. A lot of the Slosophies have that prominent nipple. Here's a close-up. You can kind of see the blue bruising. There, you can really see the blue bruising. Just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And the caramel-colored cap, obviously. Just so pretty. Here's some more Lacaria. Or, looks a little bit of different. Like a Gymnopus or something. I wish I was better at these. Gymnopus... Or someone might call it a calibioid. Calibia, maybe. Here's some lichen. 
and some West Coast Amanitas. I'm also hesitant to try to ID these, but definitely an Amanita muscarioid. Amanita section muscaria or whatever. There's the uh, the stem next to the vulva, the, the frills, the wrinkles that are most notable in these. Beautiful. These weren't as plentiful, but there were quite a few, but definitely not as common as the Rushula. That they were just taking up all the space. With that beautiful uh, vulva formation. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And here's a bolete or bolete like thing. Someone's got to help me out on these. I do not know what to call this at all. It's really unique. I don't think I found. Uh, another one like this. Hopefully I got it. Yeah, got a picture of the underside. Um, wait, the, uh, doesn't Tylopilus have, uh, freckles like that? Someone correct me on this. Was it Sweelus or, no, this, I think it's Tylopilus. Uh, I'm probably absolutely wrong on this. It's really cool though. Here's a kind of a cross section of it. It didn't really bruise. Very interesting looking with those frills on top of the cap. Pretty cool. Okay, moving on to the fucking massive amounts of Rushulas just everywhere. Just everywhere. This was kind of like a campground area. Um, so we have, we, we see these like little uh, places where people have fires or something. I don't know. But, man, these guys are just everywhere. It was definitely, it's just been raining so much. Some liverwort for you. I'm not used to seeing these, actually, but really pretty, like, branch-like formations on it. Really cool. Cool looking. Liverwort, liverwort, whatever. Okay. Um, a little Rushula guy for you. Really cool. These, oh man, I don't really know what to call them, guys. Somebody help me out. Oh, uh, Cortinarius, I guess. That'd be my first guess. I don't know what kind of Cortinarius, but definitely has the look. Someone help me on those. More of these giant brown rustulas. Giant. Huge. That's my foot. I'm used to seeing these guys just like tiny where I'm from. But man, they loved this area. This area was like just full of them. Here's some Claveria or Alloclaveria purpurea. Could be. Really pretty. Really fragile. I didn't realize you just touch these things and they kind of break apart, like right here. You just barely touch it and they just break. So, probably not a good edible, even if I don't know if people eat these. Very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And here was some type of foliota. I didn't. It was like some covered in some swamp. Like it wasn't really a walkable area. So I didn't go forward to inspect it. But ah, uh, sorry for the shitty pictures. I didn't see them anywhere else. So I probably. But they had those like freckles, you know, on top that are really. Like you can kind of see them there that are common in foliotas. I should have just walked over and grabbed one because I didn't see them anywhere else. All right, these little slimy things, which I found out, like I thought it was some type of Helvella or something, but uh, I saw them, see, you can see a stem right here. So they actually were like regular mushrooms, but I, I kept seeing more and realized that this is just the melted version of some other type of gilled mushroom. So it's like a regular like mushroom with gills and a stem, but then it just melts away. I didn't even know what to call it. Here is a what I'm guessing is a Cortinarius. They were also kind of everywhere. If I'm wrong, someone correct me. And here's another Psilocybe. Shitty picture, but you can see the purple brown spores right here from a mushroom that was right above it. Bam! A gorgeous Amanita bulb for you. 
gorgeous, gorgeous things. These are definitely the most photogenic ever. Didn't pick any. I know some people eat them. I know one of you guys on Twitter actually likes to eat the, you've been picking the peach fly garricks. You know who I'm talking about. I used to pick those peach fly garricks um, back in Georgia. I've, I've eaten a couple. Can't say I've had remarkable experiences. Here's a rushula hiding in the dune grass. That was a honker. Okay, this is the one that's melting. And I want to call it Cortinarius. He's kind of webby right here. But, like, I also think I'm wrong. Somebody tell me what the heck this is. Because I'm pretty sure when it gets older, it just melts away. The cap just melts. So you can see it's sort of starting to, like, turn into mucus or whatever. Because there were tons of them that were just, like, uh, just a pile of slime. Someone help me out on this guy. I have no idea what to call it. Anyways. Some slime mold or something for you. Really pretty. All over this tree. Yeah, what is uh it was I had I had pictures earlier of of this one. I still don't know. Some more beautiful amanitas. I could have picked one or two. I definitely want to try to um some people report these as just eating one dried cap is like relaxing and maybe slightly euphoric. Beautiful things, jeez. I could take pictures of these guys forever. There's another one. Okay. Um, I think I was an idiot and did not get a picture of the underside. Oh, I did. I did. Uh, oops, more philosophy. But this cap looks so different, like weird. The gills look like Lucaria, but the cap just does, just looks like a, Mm, some weird mushroom that I found in the past that I can't remember the name of, but anyways. If someone knows, let me know. And here's a picture of Hyacinth taking pictures of some more Psilocybes. So cool to be finding these guys in the dune grasses. So cool. Oh, uh, look area. <laughs> we look slightly off though. Probably something else. Pretty though. All right. So I did not find very many of these Helvella. Maybe you call it Helvella lacunosa. Don't know if there's another name for it, but. I found one or two sparse ones, and then I found this one patch. They were just like in this one focused patch. And whatever this guy is, somebody must help me. Help me, help me. Because they were definitely interesting. Oh, there is something these are making me think of, but the name escapes me. Holy cow. This like sheen that they had. They were smooth. and You can see the stem is like... This grayish, almost translucent type of thing. Anyway, back to the Helvella. There was this one patch. There's a bunch I'll show you in a second. This one kind of broke off, and you can see the inside formation. Looks like a honeycomb or something. Really cool. Some more Claveria with some of its mycelium up close. This was really cool. I, I, I think it's its mycelium. I, it looks like kind of like a bacteria infection or something, but it's probably its own mycelium at toward the base. I mean, maybe it's mold because it definitely looks like fuzz, it's less than thready. Who knows? Looks really cool. Really cool. 
Okay, I didn't really pick these, but I've seen something similar just like burrowing up from concrete or rocks or something like this. I forget the name. Yeah, I have no idea what those were. I should have picked one. All right, look at this prime. Uh, pretty sure it's Clitosopy Nuda, Lapista Nuda, or the Bluet. You can see it's like erupting from its like mycelium. You know, the mushroom must be comfortable enough to have its mycelium exposed so close to the ground, you know? These guys were just huge. Just all these mushrooms are just, they loved this area. Loved it. This was really pretty. Uh, there's another, another one of those smooth looking things. I just don't know what to call it. No idea. Whoops, where am I going? More of these things. What do, what do you call these? Just an, uh, another type of lapista or something? Okay. Found a few of these. They were tiny, 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 tiny. It was really hard to get this picture, actually. I had to delete a bunch of that were uh, blurry. But don't even know what to call this. Another Helvella. Those are really cool. There's a nice close-up. It's a good picture, John. Damn. Beautiful things. Here's that patch I was talking about. See, you can kind of see him, even though this picture's shitty. Let me go back. You see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. They were really cool. Some more sloths before you. A little pin there, cute little guy. They're almost orange when they're pinning. So cool. Oh, so I really wanted to get this picture of these Rushula just like bursting from underneath this log. Just like, man, these guys were so plentiful. So plentiful. Really pretty. So cool how they burst from underneath. And here's the end. You can see some Reese's litter over here. Beautiful, beautiful. Right next to these coprinoids. Look at this little cluster that had this like fat root. And I've realized that I've seen little like uh, depictions of you know ink ink cap mushrooms or coprinus coprinoids. And this is the first time I've actually seen this formation with this like little root structure that I uncovered. And I have a video you'll probably see in a little bit of me handling this, but it was so cool that this is like the archetypal coprinoid formation. So cool. There it is. So pretty. Don't know if it's edible or not. It was nice and fluffy. And I actually think that's it. So, I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching my little mushroom adventure. Um, I should have sprinkled some video here throughout. So, um, yeah, uh, feel free to comment if you guys know any of those names because uh, I, I got to work on my mushroom taxonomy, especially West Coast. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you know any of those names. Thanks for watching and have a good one.